In this video, we're going to talk about several aspects of soil structure, bulk density and porosity, and how we assess those in advance of doing deep soil tillage. Bulk density is an important component of soil health because what it does is it explains how much um, air versus soil is, is in the soil. Normally, soil is anywhere from 45 to 48, 50 percent air, um, and the rest of it is the, the mineral fraction. And so measuring the bulk density gives us a good idea of whether or not um, tillage will uh, loosen the soil or whether or not the uh, tillage will not necessarily benefit the soil. The method that we use to measure the bulk density um, is important to understand because if you understand the method, it's a lot easier to understand the concept of bulk density. So we're going to review quickly um, how the soil bulk density is actually measured. So we start with these columns of, of a known diameter and a known height and we pound it into the side of the soil or we can get augers that actually press it down from the surface down. But since we have it, a backhoe pit here, it's easier just to go into the side of the soil. So what I'm going to do is press it into the soil. This is a very distinct volume. And then we dig it out. Okay, so next what we want to do is to uh, level off the top of the cylinder so the soil that's in there is directly or even right across the top. Because remember, we're going to be measuring the volume of the soil and its weight. Put a cap on it. Then we do the same for the bottom. That was already pretty even. Put a cap on it. Now what we'll do is we'll go back to the laboratory and open this up and dry it so we drive off all the moisture and then weigh it and we can then subtract the weight of the caps and or the cylinder and it'll give us the weight of the soil inside this pre-prescribed volume and that gives us the bulk density, the grams per cubic centimeter. As you can imagine, the less more air you have in here means the less soil, it's going, to weigh, it's going to weigh less, it's going to be lighter. And if the soil has very poor porosity and is pretty compacted, it's going to have less air and consequently more soil and therefore it'll weigh more and consequently the bulk density will be reflected in having a higher value. The third component of soil structure is its porosity. The porosity includes two factors, the total volume of pores and the size of those pores. Water is held in the soil by adhesion of the water to the soil surface where two or more soil particles are touching. This water becomes more difficult to remove by suction exerted by the roots as the pores become smaller. Generally, in agriculture, we strive for a broad pore size distribution. Large pores allow for drainage of water down into the subsoil and underlying bedrock. Medium and small pores hold water against the pull of gravity and yet allow plants to extract that stored water for their needs. The very small pores hold water that's not really available to plants but keeps many microorganisms functioning. The tools for management of soil structure include cover cropping, application of organic matter, and tillage. The organic matter and the cover cropping supply organic matter that is then used by uh, worms and other biota that live in the soil that help to burrow through the soil and create soil structure. They also leave behind glues, waxes, resins that keep that soil structure, those aggregates, glued together. Tillage, on the other hand, is used to loosen the soil and infuse air into the soil by uh, running a metal shank through the soil. What we want to do is separate the aggregates but not pulverize them. So it's similar to looking at a pallet of bricks where you have the bricks are all lined up stacked neatly with almost a little crack in between each one versus dropping that pallet off the back of the truck and all the bricks are now in all sorts of weird arrangements, cattywampus, and then it infuses more air in between each brick. 
That's the concept of what we want to do with deep tillage. We don't want to crush the bricks, we just want to change their arrangement with each other so we infuse more air into the subsoil. The method used to determine when a soil is sufficiently dry to be tilled is relatively simple. It requires a soil auger, a relatively stiff knife to get the soil out of the auger, two hands, and a tape measure. What we do is we auger into the soil until we get down to the depths at which we want to uh, till the soil. So for instance, if we want to till the soil to 36 inches, we need to do this test all the way to the bottom of that 36 inch layer. Typically we do this in uh, increments of a foot or six inches, depending on um, how wet the soil is. This particular soil, here we are August 1, is relatively dry. We know that the surface horizon is, is dry enough to till. It's the subsoil that we actually want to uh, test at this point. One of the trade-offs we have with deep tillage is that it requires a bulldozer to come across the land. So we end up sacrificing the soil structure and the surface horizon because it gets ground up by that track layer and we, we, we sacrifice that to get better structural uh, separation in the subsoil. Luckily, by adding organic matter and or the cover crop when we do the surface tillage, the surface is relatively easily repaired and goes back to its granular or blocky structure. This particular soil, we've gone down now about uh, 12 inches. You can see that it's, I've, just putting it in the, in the auger has essentially pulverized it. So this is most certainly dry enough at this point to drip to 12 inches. So we'll continue just pulling out more and more soil until we get to that clay layer that we know is down there. Okay, we're getting a little bit of moisture now. I can still tell it's much drier than the plastic limit, so that's safe to till to 14 inches. Okay. So now we've gotten down into the clay layer. Pull a piece out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this somewhat moist soil and you need to pulverize it. So you want to take all of the soil structure out of it. So you don't want any aggregation of it. Um, just imagine a four inch wide ripper shank traveling it four or five miles an hour running vertically through this soil. It's going to rip, it's going to, um, the, right at the ripper shank, it's going to destroy the soil structure too if it's too wet. Essentially, somewhat like running a knife through tofu. Okay, so I've taken the, the structure out. I've knocked out all of the little rocks that are in there too, okay? Form it into a ball. And now what I want to do is try to get it into a noodle, a longitudinal noodle that's about one-eighth of an inch. If I can get this, this ball into a noodle that's one-eighth of an inch uh, thick or a diameter or thinner, then the soil's too wet to deep till. If it starts to break apart before then, then the soil's dry enough to till. So here I go. Okay, so it's somewhat cigar shaped. I can throw away the pieces that I don't need. Throw away the pieces I don't need. It's getting thinner. We're down to about three eighths of an inch, a little, little bit more than a quarter inch. So throw away the pieces I don't need. But you can see it's still not breaking apart yet. Okay, there we go. I'm going to go ahead and break this and go one more time. You can see it's still stuck together. So it's still got enough plasticity to stick together. And when I measure it, bingo, it's right at one eighth of an inch and it's still stuck together. Therefore, this soil is too wet to deep till. This one may still be sufficiently dry that we can till to this. This was at 26 inches. So what I do is I take that, that aggregate that comes out 
and I completely need it so that it has no more structural component to it. So I need to, to go through and compress everything, similar to the way the bulldozer shank would when it goes through. It's going to compress the soil. So once I get the, the structure taken out, I'm going to shape it into a ball. This one doesn't form a perfect ball. Okay, now I'm going to start running it between my hands and trying to get it down to the size of a 1 8 inch diameter noodle. <coughs> As I said, this soil is pretty hard. I've already got one piece broken off. You can throw away the pieces that are broken. I'm gonna, now this one's not going to make it. See, I've got already getting it broken. I just can't get it to that uh, one eighth of an inch noodle shape. Let me go ahead and restart this one. Very gently. Okay, it's, I can see where it's cracking, but it's not at one eighth of an inch yet, and it's probably going to break. I can feel it breaking in my hand. One piece broke off. This piece broke off. So that's only about a quarter of an inch in diameter. That's getting down to about... Uh, <clears throat> yeah, that's a quarter of an inch. And we may make it. Break, break, break. It's not quite an eighth yet. It's, it's three sixteenths. And you can see, once I get it near one eighth of an inch in diameter, and this one is right at one eighth of an inch, see how it's broken? It just doesn't have the cohesion or the plasticity to continue to stick together. So this soil right now at this depth of 22 inches is right at the cusp of being able to rip. So therefore when I go to the next layer down it probably will still be too wet to, to rip. But this one is just barely passes the test of being able to rip to 22 inches. So if you're in a situation where at the end of August or September you need to get the soil ripped and yet it's still too wet then just don't rip it as deep. So if you're planning on ripping it to 36 inches and you can only get it dry to 28, rip to only 28. If you ripped it to 36, that top 8 inches of soil that you've just ripped through that's too wet is going to be puddled and it's essentially like laying down a piece of concrete 28 inches below the soil, the, the surface of the horizon that roots aren't going to be able to penetrate and where you've just uh, squeezed all the, compressed all the air out of it. So in summary, we have several salient points. One, Getting the subsoil sufficiently dry for tillage starts in the autumn before the tillage operation, 10 months later. Establish a thick, deep-rooted cover crop in the autumn of the year before you expect to conduct the deep tillage. Even if your soil is on flat ground and the winter cover crop is not required by local regulations, still put in a cover crop. You will need it to draw out water in the following summer. Do not mow the cover crop until the soil is sufficiently dry to the depth of the deep tillage. Even a dormant cover crop will still draw moisture from roots in the subsoil. Do not disk under the cover crop thinking it will help dry the soil. Disking will only dry the top four inches and leave the rest of the soil depth wet with no roots to the surface to draw out moisture from the soil. Music